Hi, this is Pat Kaplow, and I'm uh, doing problem number 20 on page 66 in chapter 3. The problem reads, Romeo is chucking pebbles gently up to Juliet's window, and he wants the pebbles to hit the window with only a horizontal component of velocity. He is standing at the edge of a rose garden, 4.5 meters below her window, and 5 meters from the base of the wall. See the figure. How fast are the pebbles going when they hit her window? So uh, in this problem, you've been given some initial information. Uh, we know that there are some uh, pebbles that are being launched up from the ground below, and we know that they're coming up and hitting the window up here with only a horizontal component of velocity. So uh, let's go ahead and start this problem. We know that when we get to the top, the velocity, uh, I guess the final velocity, is uh, all in the uh, x direction. That's, uh, that's important. Uh, over here on the right hand side I'm going to go ahead and divide my paper into the usual uh, horizontal and vertical components. And uh, I'll be solving these uh, separately, keeping the horizontal and vertical pieces uh, completely separated. I'll start over here with a description uh, of the horizontal component of velocity, which is going to be the x component of velocity is equal to the displacement over the time interval. So the change in x or the range, that's given to you in the problem. The sketch kind of shows that. So we know that the distance here from where he's throwing the pebbles to the base uh, or the wall that goes up to the window is 5 meters. That's given to you in the problem. You also know, while I'm at it, uh, we'll need that for the vertical piece. We know that the height here is 4.5 meters. Um, all right, so we've got a description here. Now, we know delta x, so uh, we should be able to, uh, we know this piece, delta x, and yikes, didn't want to do that. Sorry about that. Uh, we are looking, we know delta x, we don't know uh, the time, so we're solving for our horizontal component of velocity here at the end. So let's go over here into the vertical. There are three equations to choose from. Uh, for starters, we know the acceleration of the object. We know that the acceleration is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, we also know something important, uh, that the um, final y component of velocity is going to be equal to zero. So therefore, uh, and, and we know that because they say that the final uh, velocity is entirely horizontal. So I know that vf in the y uh, dimension is equal to zero. Uh, the initial velocity in the y dimension, we, uh, we don't know uh, what that is but uh, ultimately um, we can figure it out. If they were asking for that, I could uh, use um, this equation here. I could say that uh, this is the third equation. I could say that Vf squared is equal to Vo squared plus 2a delta y. Keep in mind uh, I left a space here because I forgot to write this piece in. We also know that the change in y or the height that the pebble is thrown is 4.5 meters. So we have kind of a classic kinematics problem where we have four things. One of them is unknown, in this case VOY, and we could solve for that. Um, I chose to do that first, although ultimately that's not what they're asking for. This is, ends up kind of being an intermediate step. I'll go ahead and solve for uh, VO uh, in the Y uh, dimension. Remember that everything over here is in the vertical plane, and I end up getting uh, VF squared minus 2a delta y root is equal to the initial velocity. Uh, substituting some numbers in here for vf, we know that vf is going to be 0. And now I'm going to be subtracting from that 2 times negative 9.8 meters per second per second. Oops. times a change in y. My change in y position goes from my final is positive 4.5, my initial is 0, so that's going to be positive 4.5 meters. Go ahead and extend that 
all of that, of course, is equal to VOI. When I plug that into my calculator, I get the uh, root of 88.2 or 9.39. So 9.39 meters per second is going to be my initial velocity in the y dimension. I'm not being asked to solve for that, though. I'm asked to be, I ultimately, I'm going to need time here. I know delta x already, so I can determine what this final horizontal component of velocity is if I only had the time. I'm going to go ahead and use the second equation, vf equals vo plus at. Now that I know the initial velocity, I can go ahead and substitute that in right here. Um, I know that the final velocity is zero, so I'm going to basically get vf minus vo divided by a is equal to t. And substituting uh, some numbers in there, I'm going to get 0 minus 9.39 meters per second divided by negative 9.8 meters per second squared, my acceleration due to gravity, is equal to time. Uh, now that I've done that, I'm going to get uh, 1.04 seconds is equal to the time that it takes this object to go from here, technically, up to rest. If it was fired straight up with an initial vertical component of velocity of plus 9.39 meters per second. So I know the time of flight, and ultimately, that's going to get substituted right up there into the uh, horizontal equation. So I'm going to get now Vx is equal to... 5 meters divided by 1.04 seconds, and my horizontal component of velocity turns out to be 4.8 meters per second. Now, I could do a bunch of other things uh, with this problem. This, this problem is finished uh, at this point. But uh, what if they were asking for the, um, and they're not, but what if they were asking for the uh, vector velocity that it was initially given? Well, we now know the x component of velocity, that's 4.8 meters per second. And I've already solved for, over here in part one, uh, the y component of velocity, that's uh, 9.39. And I could add those two components together to get a resultant. So if the question asked what the initial velocity vector was, uh, we could answer it joining these two through a vector addition problem. But ultimately, this question simply asks, what's the horizontal component of velocity? Or more specifically, they ask, with what velocity does it reach the window? This 4.8 meters per second doesn't change throughout the entire interval here. So it's got a 4.8 meter per second horizontal component of velocity throughout its path.